The purpose of this video is to educate the general public and the different industries involved on the different ways the spread of salmonella can be reduced and the number of infected patients can be minimized if we all do our parts. At the end of this video, it is expected by the others that the audience understand what needs to be done by them to decrease the rate of salmonella infections as it is a community effort. Recalling from the previous video, salmonella is a type of bacteria typically found in poultry and eggs that can cause illnesses in severe cases, death. When infected with salmonella, it could cause diarrhea, sudden fever, and nausea. The CDC reported around 1.35 million confirmed cases and 420 deaths every year. In 2020 alone, 212 cases of salmonella in 23 different states, including 31 hospitalizations and zero deaths were reported, and a spike of 87 patients were observed in the last couple of months. To prevent the spread of salmonella and limit the number of infected patients, the first step needed to be done by the general public is to practice proper hygiene. Personal hygiene is the most important thing to prevent infection. Washing hands after touching live flocks, different kinds of raw meat and eggs is a way to prevent that, and also cooking meat and eggs thoroughly to eliminate pathogens. As mentioned before, due to the loss of fluid through extensive diarrhea, rehydration therapy is the best way to treat the patient. For those patients who are not able to drink water, intravenous fluid is injected to supplement the lost fluid and electrolyte. There are no known vaccines that can prevent or relieve this infection except antibiotics. However, antibiotics are not recommended because they have an effect of the prolonged appearance of bacteria in the stool. In cases where the patient is weakened, antibiotics are used. Besides, the treatment of for the infection varies in the type of patients. For healthy adults, doctors offer a pediolite to rehydrate and prolong after prolonged diarrhea. For healthy children, doctors do not give specific medication to fight off the bacteria, but suggest they drink water instead. In cases where the child has a high fever, doctor will offer acetophetamine. In infants and elders whose immune system is weakened, antibiotics are offered. There are various ways scientists approach to prevent the spread of salmonella. Now we are going to talk about the different researches and their effectiveness. Phages are virus particles that infect and replicate within bacteria and archaeons. Many researchers have investigated the effectiveness of phages as biocontrol agents against salmonella in fresh produce such as fruits and vegetables and meats such as poultry, pork, and ETC. This can be done by using a factor called the multiplicity factor of infection, MOI, where a lower MOI would be more beneficial and economical to use in the food industry. Researchers concluded that while the use of phages alone leads to some positive effects, the combination of these phages and other components such as antimicrobials and or other microbial entities will lead to greater results. For instance, some researchers sprayed pig skin with a phage cocktail of UAB Pi-20, UAB Pi-78, and UAB Pi-87, and then incubated it at 33 degrees Celsius for six hours. A notable bacteria reduction of less than four and two log per centimeter squared was observed by Salmonella typhimurium and Salmonella enteroiditis, respectively. The application of phages to food products is a fairly new technology in the U.S., so food companies should contact other companies such as Micros, Novolytics, Intralytics, and so on, who specialize in commercial application of phages to food products. This will significantly reduce the spread of different strains of salmonella between the population. In the research published in 2017, the possibility of prevention of salmonella on eggshells was determined. The use of atmospheric pressure plasma showed the effectiveness of inactivating salmonella. Eggshells were displayed under different exposure times to carry out the experiment. The gas composed of a mixture of argon and oxygen exposed at 1000 CFU centimeters squared inoculation had a significant impact on salmonella reduction. As the exposure time extended, the effectiveness of the reduction of salmonella increased. Research published in 2018 by Leo and Associates investigated the action of Lactobacillus plantarum associated with the prevention of salmonella. Their results showed that different Lactobacillus had different inhibition effect on salmonella. It prevented adhesion and invasion of salmonella to host, which also maximized immune response of the host. 
Salmonella can be transmitted through different food products. In this research, the tomatoes inoculated with five different rifampin-resistant strains of salmonella were used to see the effect of different concentration of hypochlorous acid. Treatment of 100 ppm of hypochlorous reduced the level of salmonella by less than 4.5 log CFU in the presence of organic load. Also, with the treatment of 75 ppm, salmonella cross-contamination was reduced but in the absence of an organic load. Ultimately, sanitizing with a higher concentration of hypochlorous acid reduces the cross-contamination of salmonella more effectively. People need to be mindful of what is going on with salmonella. Some salmonella strains have been observed to be resistant to antibiotics, and when this happens, patients tend to be hospitalized longer. Resistant to ampicillin, which is the most used drug to treat salmonella, has been observed in salmonella-infected patients from Michigan. The reason for this occurrence is still unknown to Michigan doctors, but a call to action must be sent to researchers to do more investigation on the strange strains of salmonella and the general public to practice good prevention measures. To finish off this presentation, we would like to remind everyone that salmonella infection can happen in various ways, but commonly through uncooked meat and eggs. Washing hands and cooking meat and eggs thoroughly are the most effective way to prevent infection. There are no known vaccines for the treatment, so salmonella is not a type of infection that could be disregarded of. Like most viruses, salmonellas have different strains and increased resistance to ampicillin, restraining the researchers to find the right vaccines, supporting the research projects to find new ways to prevent the spread of salmonella could help reduce the spread each year.